The white-tailed deer is a common sight all across the United States. Since colonial times, the white-tailed deer has been used for food and recreational hunting purposes. Nonetheless, even as lands were cleared for farming and residential purposes, white-tailed deer have shown a remarkable ability to adapt and flourish, and as a result, its numbers are now higher than ever. Upstate New York is certainly no exception. Here, white-tailed deer can be seen everywhere, not only in the wild, but also increasingly in residential areas and other places where they regularly come in contact with the local human population. Cayuga Heights is a village on the outskirts of the city of Ithaca. This affluent community has experienced ever-increasing numbers of white-tailed deer in its neighbourhoods over the past decade. My kids love them. They look at deer and they think it's some kind of adventure having deer. I have guests, they just adore them. <laughs> they can't believe we are living in a house where deer come and visit, but there have been some, some small issues. Mayor of Cayuga Heights, Kate Supron, is all too familiar with this issue. The village is 1.84 square miles, which is pretty small, and estimates from Dr. Curtis, the best population estimate we have is that we have about 200 deer in the village, so approximately 100 deer per square mile, which is um, a really unnatural uh, population level of deer, which then, you know, they start to have an impact and actually change the landscape. and. Um, having so many of them in such pr close proximity to humans really changes the behavior of the deer to where they no longer run away from you. Um, if you're running, they just stand right there. According to figures provided by the Cayuga Heights Police Department, the number of deer car accidents rose from six to 24 between 2008 and 2009. The number of deer incidents also rose from 16 to 31. The police department defines a deer incident as any incident involving a call about a deer. In 2010, there have been no signs of the deer incidents decreasing. Between January 1st and November 24th, there were a total of 23 deer car accidents and 27 deer incidents. Partly as a result of these figures, Mayor Supron supports plans to cut down the deer levels using lethal methods. So what the deer committee proposed and what the trustees are currently considering is a program whereby first you sterilize using um, surgical sterilization, tubal ligation surgery. Um, you sterilize the core population of does that you want to keep. So let's say, I think our program says somewhere between 20 and 60, but let's say we go with approximately 30 uh, sterilized does, bringing us down to a um, sustainable level of 15 deer per square mile. Um, once you have that core population sterilized, you would use um, one suggestion uh, in the proposal is to use professional sharpshooters who come in and not roam through the neighborhood, um, but have uh, sites, approved sites, where homeowners and surrounding property owners have given permission, and they would um, attract the deer with bait, like apples, and then use um, rifles and shoot them. The meat would then be, um, the animals would be field dressed, you know, very simple field dressing. Our DPW would load them onto trucks and they would go to, I kid you not, the Broken Antler Processing Center, which is the, um, uh, I guess you call it like meat processing, game processing center. Professor Paul Curtis at Cornell University has been conducting an integrated deer management study since 2007. This study has examined the best practice models for managing the deer population on the grounds of the university, and Professor Curtis has advised Cayuga Heights on the best way to conduct their own program to manage local deer levels. Other communities that have had success in the past have usually used combination type approaches with uh, potential for some fertility control and also some uh, lethal control or uh, removal of deer through hunting or a bait and shoot program. With our initial work in the village of Cuga Heights. We started with a sterilization project. After about two years, we were able to show uh, some reduction in deer population size. Uh, we switched over to an experimental contraceptive vaccine that failed, and within two years, uh, essentially the deer herd was right, right back where it started. So they're very resilient and can recover quickly from population declines. Uh, so it usually takes some form of uh, deer removal in addition to fertility control. The health risks posed by deer for the local residents are a major issue for some people. Fears that the deer will attack them and their children have led some to take steps to protect themselves. 